there, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. I got a problem with you. I've had a problem with you since I first saw you and read the first two volumes of your book. But mostly it's with you as a movie. Because, well, after reading the first two volumes of your series, I was so bored I couldn't be bothered to waste any more time or money on it than I already did. See, for any story to be good, let alone work, it's got to have good characters and a good plot. No matter the medium, be it video games, movies, television, comic books, whatever. If it's missing one or the other, then it's going to be weak. And if it's missing both, then it's going to fail. Now, I will be fair and say that you do have some good characters, such as Kim Pine, Wallace Wells, and Knives Chow. Kim Pine is awesomely snarky. Wallace Wells is not a horribly stereotyped gay man, isn't hated for being gay, and enjoys a rather active social life. So, hey, props for that. And Knives Chow has more character and personality than the two main leads. Heck, I even enjoyed Chris Evans as evil ex Lucas Lee. He was an absolute joy to watch, which is due in part to his ability as an actor, which made him one of the few good things to watch about, uh, well, the Fantastic Four movies. However, those are side characters, and not the ones we follow from beginning to end. Unfortunately, we're rather stuck with your two main leads, Scott Pilgrim and Ramona Flowers, as played by Michael Cera and Mary Elizabeth Winstead. I don't know much about their roles in other movies, but they're rather bland and boring and have no chemistry together. About the only reason that you give us that we should care about them is just that we should care about them. I don't. Partly, it's tied into the story, wherein Scott has to defeat over Mona's seven evil exes in order to win the right to date her. Seeing as how you're so heavily tied in the video game references, uh, the battles are carried out Killer Instinct Mortal Kombat style, with the defeated dying in a puddle of coins. Now, obviously, this is a throwback to rescuing the princess from, well, Super Mario Bros., Zelda, or just about any other game from the 8 and 16-bit era. However, in 2010, when you came out, I found the whole concept to be rather insulting to Ramona. After all, doesn't she decide who she dates or doesn't date? Why does Scott have to fight 07 of her evil exes? Heck, why does Scott even get involved when he's dating a minor? Isn't he happy enough uh, using Knives Chow? Or is he that infatuated with Ramona? The answer is, obviously, yes, else we wouldn't have you or your books. As I said before, you need good characters and a good plot to make a story work. And you lack, at least, good main characters. Scott Pilgrim is a loafer, a lazy bum who doesn't even bother looking for a job, from what we see, who mooses off of his friend Wallace, and who is dating a minor that the story seems intent on combining as many male fantasies into one as possible. Why else would we have a young Asian woman who wears a pleated skirt uniform and goes to Catholic school? You're dating a high school girl. Not bad, not bad. Thank you, thank you. Knives Chow. She's Chinese. Wicked. Despite your best efforts, though, the actress, Ellen Wong, infuses Knives Chow with more character and personality than Scott Pilgrim and Ramona Flowers combined. Times ten. I'd honestly like to see a movie with her in it in the future sometime, as any actress with that much energy is bound to bring us something better than you. Getting back to Scott, who's using knives as an emotional crutch after his breakup with his last girlfriend, we find that he immediately becomes obsessed with Ramona after seeing her in a dream of his. He then stalks her at a party, endeavors to find out all that he can about her from his friends, and then dates her behind Knives' back. Essentially, one of your main characters is now a lying, cheating, stalkerish bastard, and we're stuck with him for the rest of the film. Oh, and that date I mentioned? He pesters Ramona into it, and she literally has no option but to accept just to get rid of him. You know, you need to sign for this, whatever this is. But if I sign for it, you'll leave. Yeah, it's how it works. Okay, well, maybe... Do you want to hang out sometime, get to know each other? 
You want me to hang out with you? Um, yeah, if that's cool. If I say yes, we sign for your damn package. So, yeah, eight o'clock? Classy. How about Ramona Flowers, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you did, because I think she has about as much stuff as a wet piece of paper. So she rollerblades, works for Amazon, has different colored hair, and has several evil exes. I just don't understand the appeal of her character. I don't see how Scott, aside from being a cowardly, passive-aggressive douchebag, could cheat on knives for this lady. Throughout the entire movie, we see her watch Scott fight her evil exes and do nothing else. She doesn't even express displeasure at being fought over like a gaming system or a hunk of meat. Except when Roxanne Roxy Richter shows up. Then and only then does Ramona whip out Thor's hammer and proceeds to lay the smackdown on that particular evil ex. Uh, still, I even found the fight to be pretty distasteful. Not only because Ramona only seems capable of defending herself against other women, but because Roxy dies orgasming to death in a shower of coins from a Kill Bill-esque nerve strike from Scott. <sighs> and then, after the fight, Scott slut shames Ramona. Hey, just out of sheer curiosity and concern for my mortal well-being, is there anyone at this party that you haven't slept with? I imagine that if you had swapped the genders of Ramona and Scott, that line wouldn't be there. So way to slut shame women, or at least this one woman, for having sex, or at least past relationships. Of course, it all leads up to the anticlimactic battle where Scott defeats Gideon Gordon Graves with the help of Knives Chow. Ramona gets one hit in, and we learn that Gideon who set up this entire tournament of evil exes, was controlling Ramona with a mind control chip. No, I mean, he literally has a way of getting into my head. Which begs the question of how she managed to escape New York in the first place. Mind control chip pretty much well means your mind is controlled. Unless Gideon was just screwing around with her. In which case, why go through all the trouble of finding all those evil exes if it was such a pain for him? Heck, why are all the evil exes so gung-ho to fight Scott they don't even know him? I guess the implication is that, well, Ramona is this wonderful person worth fighting for. Otherwise, why come to Toronto at all? Lucas Lee had a pretty good movie career going on, until Scott tricked him into killing himself. You really think you can go me into doing a trick like that? There are girls watching. <laughs> Uh, well, Todd Ingram was the basis of a popular band until Scott killed him. You once were a vegan, but now you will be gone. Vegan. And well, the Katayanagi twins were popular musicians until Scott and his band killed them. Come to think of it, after all is said and done, why aren't the police arresting Scott for being a mass murderer? I know you have your defenders, and if they can see some appeal to you, then they're welcome to it. The fights were wonderfully choreographed and in flavor of video games, but they had no emotional impact. You have to care about the characters for that to happen. About the best thing I can say is that, well, Knives realizes she's better than what Scott deserves, and heads off on her own to have adventures of epic epicness. But what about you? I'll be fine. <laughs> I'm too cool for you anyway. Well, that and since Scott and Ramona are together, they can't harm anyone else. Well, I've been wanting to get that off my chest for a while now, Scott Pilgrim vs. World. You may be a shitty movie, but you're a good listener. Later!